So this is a video about how to use X-Plane 11 with the Oculus Quest 2. And it's about 20 minutes and it might save you 2 or 3 hours. So the first step is to update your graphics drivers, that's really important. I've got AMD here, um, this is how you do it, you just click that button, it's very simple. Absolutely essential, I wasted a whole lot of time because I hadn't done that. The second step is to download the Oculus PC uh, app which you can do. All these addresses are going to be in the description um, down below. So that's it, I did that, I saved that. And now, there's your file. I'm not going to run it because I already have it installed obviously, but you just would click on that and it would install. Then your second step, we're now up to step 3, is uh, install 3 bits of code for Xplain. The first one is something called Fly with Lua. Again, all these addresses are going to be in the description, and you just uh, you just download it, and I'll show you in a, later on in the video. I'll show you how you actually install it. Once you've downloaded it, there's two further stages to go, but they're both pretty easy. So here's the second one, and uh, this is something called. OVR settings that I found. And what this does is it sets your uh, it sets your X plane to the optimum settings for for VR. It's just a little bit of, of code that you download. It's tiny, and it it works with the uh, Fly with Lua. Again, I'll show you that in a few moments. So you just download that, and you're away. And then the third thing that you need is something called Move VR, and this is just so that you can import uh, ordinary window screens into your VR. Um, it's really cool. Uh, you'll see in a minute, but that's that downloaded as well. And there's all your files, wherever you saved them, in your downloads folder probably. So this is the next step, this is how you actually go about installing them into the into the game. There's three three bits of code here and you do the fly with Lua first. There's what the folder looks like. So you copy that folder and then there's gonna be full instructions in the description, don't worry, but you find your install of your of um Explain. Mine's in a dedicated solid state drive, and you go into resources, plugins, and you drop it. You drop that whole folder into plugins. So here's the second stage. This is your OVR settings. Copy that from the downloads folder. Should really have just had two windows open here. Never mind. If there's an inefficient way to do it. And you put this into X Plane 11 Resources Plugins Fly with Lua Scripts. And then finally, this is where you install Move VR. And this one goes into Xplain Resources Plugins. And so here's a little nav map. It's my uh, navigation software. So there's more or less where I want it. I'd rather make it a little bit too big than too small. <laughs> Wherever you have it, that's roughly where it's going to be, and that's roughly the size it's going to be when it's imported into the into the flight simulator. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, plan it, plan it a flight. I'm going from Shoreham in Sussex, I'm going to fly to Nice in France. 
but I'm not going to show you the flight, I'm just going to show you how to set it up. And this could be different obviously in whatever navigation software you use, but it has to be running on a PC. I think there is a way to emulate it from a, an iPad as well, but I don't know how to do that. If it's running on the same PC, and just make sure it's running in the right window, same window as the main window of the simulator. Took me a little while to figure it out. So I'm using the um, the actual controller for the Oculus to do this. And it took me a little while to figure out. There's a zoom as well. You can use the little joystick as a zoom. Here we go. Makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? So we've got Shoreham as our um, departure airport, and I want to fly over the Alps. I want to see Geneva. I want to swing down to the Côte d'Azur. So I'm just uh, not really used to this. It's, it's, it's definitely doable, but it's a little bit different, let's say, doing it from within X plane itself. Just, yep. Just faffing about here. I would maybe suggest setting this up ahead of time, actually, rather than doing it from within the game like this. Or, actually, not not within the game, but within VR, I should say. It's a lot easier. I could have just saved it, just opened it from within the game. That's really annoying. It jumps off the Geneva waypoint, so I just need to add it again. I don't know why it does that. There we go. And that's the flight plan. That'll give us a moving map and various countdown and fuel and minimum altitude information. You see that's the little green bars. So we're flying over the Alps. So it looks like my minimum height's 11,500 for that sector at least. Just save it. And now we're going to start the game. Sorry, not the game, the simulator. So again, this is really fiddly doing this from within VR. I think this bit you do probably have to do from within VR though. It's not that fiddly. This takes absolute ages. My startup time is approaching five minutes on my SST, so I've kind of skipped skipped through it here. I have a lot of scenery installed. The interface takes a bit of getting used to, but it is really good. It works well. I'm just struggling to control the controllers. So this is me just checking. I'm going to be taking off from runway 02 at Shoreham. Everything's as it should be. Checking the weather. It's a very light wind from the north, so that works. I already checked the fuel. I don't think I'm going to bother. Yep, that's definitely the right runway. Well, the flight begins. And we still have a little bit of uh, setting up to do. So we're going to go in now and enable the different bits of add-ons that we installed uh, from within the game. So the first one is OVR settings. So we're going to um, advanced options, we're going to plugins. Fly with Lua and Fly with Lua Macros. This took me a little while to figure out. Next one down, I think. Yeah, there it is. And then you go all the way to the bottom, and there's OVR settings. And when you click on that, this is really cool. What happens? Look, the 
this little thing sticks onto your other controller. So you just choose uh, choose what you're going to do. The super sampling, which improves your image smoothness. I've got mine set at I think one or one point two. Yeah, I'm going to take it from one to one point two. And then you've got a uh, frame rate, which I had it set on thirty. And I'm going to change it to auto, just for the hell of it. I think you have to just experiment with this and get the right values that w that make it run best. Mine's not quite running right, but I'm about 99% of the way there. I'm sorry. Yeah, there we are. Really rather slow. Okay, so that's it. And you hit that bottom one to enact it. And then I think you can just close the whole thing down. Might have been quicker to use the mouse here. <laughs> really fiddly. Or, or at least I'm not very good at it. There we go. That's it. So now the next stage, and this is done through the menu option in the controller. So again, advanced options, plugins, and this time it plugins, and then this time we're just going straight to move VR. This is where we get our map and manage windows. It's the bottom one. Just trying to hit the right thing yet. Yeah. And then you just choose the one you want. Obviously, it's uh, in, in our case, it's the um, little nav map. And when we hit that, and put, uh, bring into VR, it just appears. And right now it's tracking. I want to. I want to shut this down now, so I can get that into a better position. So you have to click the little red button on the top, which has got a little other window in front of it now. So yeah, I need to be clever about this. There we go. Okay, so close that. And now that you use the two controllers, you grab two edges as near as I can figure it. This is how you do it. Once it's highlighted like that. You can move it, you can resize it, you can drag it, and where you leave it, it stays. So it becomes just like if you had an iPad sitting in the Velcro in the in the cockpit. Really fiddly though. This took me ages, as you can see. But it's worth it. Because this is a really useful thing for IFR or even just for anything, just to know where you are in the world. And that's it. And we're ready to fly. And I think you have to set it up that way each time you fly. Not the whole thing, but you need to uh, bring in the little nav map each time you fly. You only have to install this stuff and enable it once though. And you can always get rid of it if you want as well. It's all free software. Um, except Oculus Rift of course, which, is, which comes with Oculus Rift. Um, yeah, that's it really. So let's take it for a spin. The video doesn't really do it justice. It's a lot more uh, immersive when you're in the VR. Makes it look very sort of jerky. It doesn't really like that. It gives you some idea of what it's like to be able to look around in the cockpit and look out the window. Maybe I'll make a video just showing this another time. It's a really short runway for the Alpha Jet showroom. Only just made it. Got about a half, about 50% fuel load. I wouldn't like to take off in a full tank.
So hopefully, although that was a little bit of messing around, hopefully you agree it was worth it. Uh, VR is really good in X-Plane. I really recommend it. I still have some work to do to get it working a little better, but it took me around three hours, and if, uh, if this helps anybody save that time, then job done. Thanks for watching, and I'll let you just enjoy the few seconds of this uh, this flight over Brighton.